Hey guys. All right, so what I'm going to do here uh, real quickly is I'm going to talk about uh, trunk baffles. I'm going to use some old, uh, some uh, um, type of pro uh, uh, props and stuff like that. Now what I've noticed is I've uh, you know, been part of this other group that talks about um, you know trunk baffles or free airs or infinite baffles or whatever, you know, but the reality is they're called trunk baffles. Um, so anyway, so what we got here is this. When we're building the structure, the physical structure for the trunk baffles, what we have to concern ourselves with is um, how stiff can we make it, okay? We want, we want two primary products or, or we want two primary goals, I'm sorry, for what we want. One of them is going to be the stiffness, the physical actual rigidity of the this, this structure itself, okay? Not how strong it is, okay, because there's a difference between strength and, and stiffness, okay? And in this case, we want it to be very, very stiff. Uh, we also want that stiffness to push uh, the operational uh, frequency or the resonance, let's say, let's say the resonance of whatever we're building this out of, we want it to be pushed out of the passband that we're listening to. So we either want it to be heavier, thicker, um, so that the resonant frequency is lower, uh, be long below the operational frequency range, or we want it to be uh, above the operational frequency range. So we want the baffle to ring, you know, beyond the frequency range we're listening to. So, the two primary ways that um, almost everybody does this is either going to do um, some sort of against the back seat uh, mount or it's going to be on the rear deck, okay? One of those two ways is, is usually the way that's done. But, and, and both ways have, have their, their shortcomings and their, you know, and, and also being good at the same time. Um, the, the rear deck one is probably the most problematic of them all. The reason why it's problematic is, is due to the fact that the structure of the rear deck is very thin, okay? There's almost nothing, uh, uh, you, know, you know, if you say this, the, the rear deck itself, you know, it's, it's, it's paper thin, you know, it's, it's just sheet metal. And so it bends and twists and, and flexes up and down. The other thing is, is that across the rear window area, there is actually no support structure whatsoever. So if I attach a baffle to it, the deck itself wants to naturally resonate. Whatever that frequency is going to be based on the mass that we're placing onto the, onto the deck itself and the structure that we're placing onto the deck. That's what's going to cause it to, to flex. And so when we're playing music and stuff like that, the deck is moving up and down. Now, I've seen this I've, I've, myself. I've, I had a Cadillac. As a matter of fact, this was years ago. I put a 10-inch on a Cadillac, um, and it flexed so physically bad that it actually canceled the bass completely out. I mean, it just, the, the bass just would never have bass. It drove me crazy. So I was looking at uh, Ben Miller. He's got, um, he's working on a project right now. And I just, I made a statement to him. I said, hey, I said, I have a feeling your deck's going to move. And he looks like he's built his deck probably in the neighborhood of roughly around about between two inches, maybe two and a half inches uh, you know, of thickness. But what he did was he just laminated sheets of plywood together, you know, whether it be birch or MDF or whatever it is, it doesn't make a difference. He just laminated the pieces together. And he probably glued them together, which would be really, really good because it actually adds to the relative stiffness of the piece. But it still has one in, in, in inherent issue that we're going to have. The problem that will be is, is that it's still laminated flat sheets of wood, which it wants to, and I'll use this as an example of it, you know, this right here, this is, you know, you're looking at this is a piece of foam and stuff. And it's probably roughly around about, say, no, oh, I don't know, about an inch, an inch, inch and a half thick and stuff like that. But this will give you an idea of what still will happen with laminated wood. It's going to flex. No matter what we do, the structure is going to want to move. Now, this is an exaggeration of how much movement there is. It depends on, you know, you know he's going to have to, you know, you bolt it down. You try everything you, you can do to make it as strong as possible or stiff as possible. Uh, in this, but what he's doing is, is he's actually making it strong. Okay, and like I said, strength is not the problem. What we need is it needed to become stiff. Now, the way we do this, and you'll notice what a lot of the baffles that I do is I build them, they basically look like a tub. Okay, and the reason for that is, is that because this structure is incredibly strong. So as you can see here, when I try to twist this, you see how much force I've got to apply to it. And even if I go this way, okay, it doesn't want to do anything. So structurally wise, this is, this is probably the best choice when ever doing the baffles. It's one of the reasons why you always see my woofers backwards, you know, when, you, when you're looking at it and stuff. Uh, 
And so the Bruce just sent me some <laughs> sent me some photos. Now, I, I'll take a look at it. And, you know, don't worry, Bruce. But the um, the re and I'm just you have to understand something, Bruce. You know, I'm not I'm not picking on you and stuff like that. I'm I'm telling you something from sheer experience. Okay, you have to understand this. I'm, I'm trying to uh, to be on quite honest with you. I just want to educate as much as I possibly can when it comes down to these subjects. And the the structure that I do, you know, like I said, is always a bucket of some format, and that gives us incredible strength. This, you know, if you do it in fiberglass, you get a really lightweight structure, but it's incredibly uh, incredibly uh, tough. If you do it at MDF, you can do it at like three quarter inch walls, you know, with like a one and a half inch back baffle, and with like a little bracing in the middle and stuff. And the thing is just damn near a tank in terms of what you get out of it. So. But basically, like I said, the, the primary thing here is it has to do with structure. When, you, when you're building these things, you want them to be as <coughs> excuse me, as stiff as possible. And so that will give you the best overall performance. So, you know, like I said, I mean, basically that was just, you know, I just wanted to show you kind of the idea, the difference between the two in terms of going with a laminated piece of wood uh, and stuff. And I and you know in in in, in Bruce's defense and stuff like that, I, you know I did tell him, you know back seat, but no I'm just kidding. No, what I'm saying is is that uh, you know uh, I have done the laminate. I, I actually built a structure once before that was almost damn near five inches thick. Okay, um, and thought that I was going to finally get rid of the problem, but again, like I said, the biggest problem on the rear decks are is the rear section where the trunk lid and the rear deck meet. There's no structural support in that area. And so the deck itself wants to naturally flex. Even though there's a big glass window there, the window's at a rake. And so it doesn't help with strength. Uh, you know, well, well, actually, in this case, stiffness at all. Uh, and so, you know, you can, we can try to laminate as much as possible, but it doesn't help us in this area. Um, a smaller woofer and stuff on a rear deck is, is relatively okay because we can pretty much mitigate most of the problems. But when we get to big woofers and stuff, 12s, Anything above a 10, uh, you know, the rear deck is usually not the best choice. It's usually to go to the seat uh, is where it would be best to do it. But anyway, like I said, <coughs> for me, I just wanted to explain, you know, the differences between the physical structures, uh, you know, from a, a flat or a laminated piece versus, you know, a bucketed type of system uh, like the ones that I do and stuff. And like I said, it's just, it's about how, how strong it can make it. I mean, think about this. I can't, you know, you can't do anything that way. You know, it's incredibly strength. Like I said, it's really strong in this direction. I mean, this is thin plastic. This is this is very, very thin plastic. And yet it's, inc you know, for me to be able to do this, and it takes that much force uh, to do it, that's that's a lot of pressure that's going to be applied. So anyway, that's, uh, that's why I just wanted to give you a, a quickie uh, five minutes on it. I'll talk to you guys later.